So recently over the weekend, my friend wanted to introduce me to this amazing burger place. And so we went to this place, it was supposedly opened by this incredible burger connoisseur. We went there and to our surprise, it was closed. It was actually gone. It had actually been a casualty of the pandemic, as with many other things I'm sure we've experienced. And so we're rather sad, but we had our minds set on having burger that night. So we ended up doing what any sane person would do in that situation. We went to McDonald's. It was literally right across the street of where the burger joint was. And so we went into that McDonald's. And I bet at this point of the story, you can sort of picture the exact scene. Of, of what we experienced, what we saw. We went in there and there were all these auto pay counters set up and we were trying to order food through this auto pay counter and everything was really quick. There were some people waiting on one side, some other people who were doing the orders with us and of course people serving the food from the counter at the other end. And it was sort of a very typical experience that you would expect from McDonald's and the food, the burgers we had, was quite standard. I mean it wasn't bad, it wasn't very good, it was just McDonald's, I suppose. And as we're having this McDonald's, it really got me thinking about what McDonald's represent. And that really made me reflect about the work of Max Weber, German sociologist, who posited that society is actually becoming more and more rationalized. Specifically, we're moving away from a society that is more or less dominated by emotional and value-leaden thinking towards more rational thinking with rational processes. A society very much defined by capitalism and really everything working in this sort of efficiency. But specifically, it got me thinking about the work of the American sociologist George Ritzer, who actually coined a paper in 1963 called The McDonaldization of Society. Now, if you take a moment to think about McDonald's, it is rather interesting in the sense that we all have a very, very clear image of the McDonald's experience, of McDonald's, of what it is and what we could expect from it. And if you were really to take a step back, it is truly incredible. Over 100 countries, more than 30,000 McDonald's restaurants in the world, practically anywhere you are, there is a McDonald's somewhere. And what is even more amazing is that we all have more or less the same picture of what McDonald's is. We know exactly how the store looks like. We know exactly how the food tastes like. We know exactly the experience that it offers. McDonald's is so uniform and reliable. It truly is very incredible. Prior to lockdown, I used to fly a lot for work and I would be in all these very exotic places and McDonald's was, in a way, a safe haven for me. It's a place I would go as a safe choice for dinner. I know exactly what to expect. Even in a country like India, where they generally do not eat beef, having visited a McDonald's in India, it was very much the same experience. Sure, the menu items are slightly different, but more or less the layout is exactly the same. And it's really on this basis that George Ritzer wrote about McDonaldization, specifically referring to how society is evolving. McDonald's is a great study of the sociological significance of this evolution society. Now, what makes McDonald's so special? Ritzer broke that down into several characteristics. First of all, there is a focus on efficiency. From the organizational level, from the organizational structure, all the way down to the level of the individual, the McDonald's Corporation has explored every avenue for the most optimum means of achieving efficiency. Think about it. The way that the restaurants are set up really promotes efficiency. It's almost like an assembly line. The customers go in, they use these automated tills, and of course we place our orders. Orders get sent through the kitchen, there's an assembly line to actually prepare the food. We go pick it up and then we go to, of course, the seats, which are of course designed as well to be very efficient. Comfortable enough for a quick seating where you're having the food, but not too comfortable to spend hours and hours there. Almost everything about it is designed to a factory level efficiency. And the second characteristic that makes McDonald's so special is its calculability. There is a heavy emphasis by the corporation on quantity, perhaps over quality. We're talking about economies of scale here. It's about being able to make as much burgers as possible within a span of a few hours, of course over a day, the business operation, and being able to serve as many customers as possible. Perhaps not so much about the individualized experience of having a very good gourmet burger that my friend and I originally wanted to have. It was all about achieving that peak economies of scale, achieving the ideal statistics. And thirdly, there's also a level of predictability 
which is very interesting as I've alluded to. The McDonald's Corporation wants that predictability. They create very predictable food designs. Even the way that the restaurant layout is designed is essentially predictable everywhere you are, anywhere you are in the world is exactly the same. Irrespective of any geographic characteristic or really anything at all, it is essentially a predictable experience anywhere you are. And in a way this also relates to the calculability and the efficiency of the corporation. And perhaps more significant as a characteristic is the characteristic of control. From an operational standpoint, there is a great degree of control. A lot of machineries and of course systems in place that allows the corporation to really track every aspect and facet of the operation of the business from the production of the food to the flow of the customers so that they could tweak anything if they had to. And when you combine all of those characteristics together, you more or less have a McDonald's. It is very efficient, it is calculable, it is very predictable, and there's a great degree of control. However, there's also a hidden characteristic that arises from these characteristics that Ritza talks about, and that is the rationalization cost. Specifically, as these characteristics are implemented and McDonald's is able to achieve this truly efficient, predictable, controlled experience for all of its customers and its businesses, and it obviously would do very well. There's a cost of this rationalization, and that is that it's very dehumanizing. You see, even from the operational standpoints, these workers at McDonald's, they're very much part of a production line. They end up doing these very menial tasks that feels very repetitive and very soulless. In essence, they become a cog in the machinery. And as the focus is all on the efficiency and all these characteristics we're talking about, the more dehumanizing it is for laborers involved. But not only that, for the customers too, the more efficient that McDonald's actually becomes and the more optimum it becomes, the more dehumanizing it is for the customers too. Think about going Going into McDonald's, the experience would certainly be one that you'd say is very predictable and sort of very reliable, but definitely wouldn't be one that you write home about. Certainly, you didn't have your most memorable moments in life at McDonald's because it's so quick, it's so fast. You're just there to eat and more or less you're gone. And so really, as an avenue for dinner, it isn't essentially one that is very humanistic as compared to, for example, sitting around a dinner table over some nice slow cooked food with your family or your friends and you're actually enjoying the quality of food and also the quality of time you're spending with these people. So this is the unintended side of manifesting these characteristics of McDonald's. And indeed, Ritz writes that as a corporation tries to actualize more of these characteristics, for example, making its business much more predictable, control and efficient, perhaps even the workers would be replaced by machinery, which is exactly what we're seeing right now with these automated tills where you just input your order. You're no longer even really speaking to somebody to get an order down. It's all done through the screen and everything's becoming more and more dehumanizing. And when you view it from this perspective, it's very interesting because if you were really to step back for a moment next time when you're at McDonald's and you really look at the system design itself, you start to realize that indeed it looks looks very much like an assembly line, a production line at a factory, both for the laborers and the customers, us. We are essentially part of this system and it is very, very dehumanizing. But that isn't the crux of McDonaldization. Now, McDonaldization refers to the fact that this model, this template of actually organizing commercial activity is spreading and it's become the default template for most commercial activities and indeed most social life today in modern society. Because in our capitalist society, competition is very strict. So these attributes that Ritzer has mentioned essentially becomes the attributes that all businesses would want to pursue. And what ends up happening is that you start to realize that more and more businesses and activities, they end up looking like McDonald's. They become more and more efficient and optimum and end up becoming a much more automated experience and, of course, significantly more and more dehumanizing. We can, of course, think of other fast food chains that are doing this, but not only food. Even toy stores like Toys R Us, Hamleys, even higher education, universities and private education too. Tourism. When was the last time we went on a trip? Museums. Even social experience in the form of social networks and social media. Everything is becoming more and more McDonaldized. They start to resemble McDonald's in the sense that they are incredibly efficient, incredibly standardized, automated, consistent, and more and more dehumanizing. And certainly, McDonaldization has brought 
us the accessibility of a lot of these things. For example, food at very cheap prices, perhaps getaway experiences at very cheap prices, the democratization of being able to socialize people around the world. But again, the question is at what cost? We are quickly losing the quality of the human experience over the quantity of very, very standardized experiences and human activity. And so Ritz's work is truly thought provoking. And the next time when you're actually at McDonald's, you start to think about it. This template of fast food that we see is essentially a template of modern life.